oh, there's a special lake, and it's, you know, well known in those areas that UFOs are seen coming out of these lakes, also out of Lake Titicaca. So you have also apparently... Uh, and it seems to be around Lake Titicaca, which is, and, and that is a giant, huge lake that is half in Bolivia, half in Peru. Mm-hmm. So, like Mount Shasta, you have this idea of hollowed out mountains in the Andes. Uh, they are these UFO bases. Uh, some of them also come out of lakes and things like that. The idea there is, um, and I talk about this in Technology of the Gods and whatnot, my book on uh, the Mana aircraft of ancient Indian Atlantis, that in ancient times, we're talking excess of 10,000 years ago, there was a, a civilization much like we have today, not a consumer society, the way ours is right now with all these different commercials and different brands of products and things like that. But they had electricity. They had high-tech stuff. They were yeah. even beyond what we have, moving giant stones and stuff like that. At some point, because of these, and this is, this is a theory here, because of these cataclysms of the Earth, this, sometimes the Earth uh, is destroyed by, by water, by fire, by ice. This is what the Mayans and Aztecs and Olmecs said. And during these these cataclysms of the earth, pole shifts, whatever, I mean, it, it's devastating. Right? Oceans spill out of their basins and giant tidal waves wash over continents. Every volcano in the world erupts. Uh, giant earthquakes, you know, happen on a worldwide scale. Mm-hmm. At this time, what can happen is we, the earth, you know, falls back into a, into a stone age. But, I, but, you know, there was high-tech stuff. A little bit like New Guinea. If you've ever gone to New Guinea, uh, that is a one weird place. I mean, it's kind of like some caveman Neanderthal society. People are running around with, with stone axes. Uh, there's a head-hunting society. But yet, in certain, you know, capital cities there, Qantas jets land. Uh, it's very high-tech, modern world at the airport. But, you know, the rest of New Guinea is living in the Stone Age. So, could be a similar thing here with Mount Shasta and Atlantis, where you have pockets of high technology. They have electricity, hydroelectric plants and stuff, just like we have today. Broadcasting it through towers, uh, like Tesla. Tesla himself envisioned all this stuff in the, in the sky. He was some, uh, you know, I believe like a reincarnated Atlantean who was basically reinventing what they already had. 10,000 years ago. They might have had higher technology than we have today. Well, I think that they did. And, it, I mean, it was, you know, anti-gravity. It was UFOs. Their, their craft, like these Vomanas and stuff, uh, some of them did have wings and whatnot, but, but some of them could, you know, hover like, say, a UFO. But the idea of Mount Shasta here and other areas is that as the world fell apart 10,000 years ago, Certain isolated areas, uh, kind of like Edgar Casey's Hall of Records and things like that, but certain places were where, you know, these Atlanteans went to and maintained in a secret place some kind of technology. It's been said of there's places in Tibet like this. Very remote spots where you could have a, a, a secret base inside of a mountain like Mount Shasta where you know you're you you have your generators running you park your vimanas um, you know you've got your gold you, you you're you're, you're going to have hydroponic and, and whatever even you can go out perhaps to local towns and things like that and buy things and that was one of the stories about Mount Shasta as you probably know is that particularly around in the late 1800s these kind of mysterious people would show up at shops in Northern California and they would buy things with with gold nuggets and things like that. And it was believed by people that they were coming out of Mount Shasta. Okay, to the phones we go now. Wild card line. Kathy, you're on the air with us. Hi there, Kathy. Hi, George. Hi. Hi. Um, I'd like to ask uh, David Childress. Is that his name? That's Children? David's name, yep. Yeah. Yes, I'd like to ask him what he thinks about the Taklamakan Desert. 
Okay, the Taklamakan Macon Desert. Yeah, right. Well, that's interesting. Um, yeah, the Taklamakan Macon Desert is that in western China. I have traveled a little bit in that area, and that too has similar legends, like um, like Mount Shasta, and uh, also around Lake Titicaca and uh, certain secret places of the Andes. Around the Taklamakan Macon Desert is. Apparently that area too was there was a, a inland sea there in much of the Gobi Desert. Uh, they often say that the Shambhala, this also kind of Mount Shasta type area, which is but rather in Central Asia, is there a secret place of the masters? That area too is uh, near the Chong Tong Highlands and the, the Kunlun Range of mountains, which is northern Tibet, the sort of north. Uh, West part of the Tibetan Plateau, which is which is a big mountain range right there. In ancient Chinese beliefs, that area was the land known as Si Wang Mu, and that's where the immortals lived. And in fact, Lao Tzu, the famous Chinese philosopher who wrote the Tao Te Ching, um, he and Confucius are the two most important philosophers in ancient China. He was leaving China through the Great Wall in Western China. And then a guard noticed who he was, because he was a famous person in China at the time. It was about 500 B.C. And he persuaded Lao Tzu to write down the Tao Te Ching, the, which is, in my mind, one of the greatest books ever written, very simple book of, of the Tao. But where he was going at that time, and he disappeared. Lao Tzu is not a person who's ever known to have died. Um, there's no grave for him. Uh, there's, there's no date of his death. He was on his way out into western China, and this was, this was beyond the Great Wall. Once you went out towards the Taklamakan Desert and the Kunlun Ranges, you were, you were out in total wilderness. But this area of China was where they believed the immortals lived. Uh, the goddess uh, Quan Yin, who also known as Si Wang Mu, they lived in this area. And allegedly, there's a mountain in this area too, like Mount Shasta, that's this hollowed out mountain and these uh, so-called masters. Shangri-La. Shangri-La. Shangri-La, like Shangri-La, exactly, okay. or Shambhala. Shangri-La is a, is a fictional account from an American novel, but he's basing that on the Tibetan legend of, of Shambhala. Okay, well, I understand the Chinese are trying to find it and dis- to destroy it, just like the, um, the Hebrews. Well, that may well be the case. Uh, I mean, if you've ever traveled in Tibet uh, in that area, and I have, Huge, huge, vast areas. I mean, there are not roads there either. Um, it's very isolated. It, and certainly, yeah, the Chinese military does, you know, more or less control that area. But it's a huge, huge, vast area. I mean, imagine if Wyoming and Montana and, and Idaho didn't have any roads in it, you know. I mean, or like one road that went across it, kind of that whole area. That's kind of what it's like out there. You know, that said, the Chinese uh, would probably like to find these places and, and, and probably make some effort. But like Mount Shasta, like in the Andes, um, other places like this, these Atlanteans or whoever they are who are in these, you know, hollowed out mountains or something, um, they have technology. Um, to repel, I think, for the Chinese and uh, kind of like cloaking devices or something like that. And you know what? If the Chinese ever got close to their hideouts or something like that, they would probably just move. And that is one of the stories about Mount Shasta, that uh, the attention uh, on Mount Shasta got, you know, so great um, really in the 1920s and, and whatnot that, the, one of the stories is that came out of like Rosicrucians and stuff in California was that they had moved and moved up to the Yukon and taken their stuff out of Mount Shasta. However, I would say, I mean, there's still a lot of UFO activity around Mount Shasta. So, I mean, it seems like Mount Shasta is an active area. Let's go back to the phones. We'll pick it up with our wild card line, Jerry in Texas. Hello, Jerry. Go ahead. Hey, well, I'm Jerry from Spring, Texas. Listen to KTRH on the. Channel uh, 740. I want to ask David a question there. I think David's his name. Is that yep. correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, David, uh, those statues that's on the east island, nobody's ever figured out how they how they got them, how they quarried them, and 
whatever happened to the people, and then they found out that they were just little bitty short statues.